Oh, someone's having a nice soak. Does the water feel good, Tobes? Does that feel nice? Cooling off a little bit? It's not that hot out. He's only been out here for a few minutes. He's fine. Turbo, where'd you go? <laughs> Hi. There he is. Hey, Turbs. What's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I'm starting this vlog off kind of last minute and unplanned. I figure that's fine. Always going with the flow here. As you can see, table gigantic mess because I've been working on the drip and things just pile up. I put things away and then get more things out. You know how it goes. Drip is a very messy thing to perfect. In the last video, I showed these fun new plants I got from Ye Brahms on Etsy, Heliconias and a bromeliad. This one right here, the one in the foot, that one. Neurogelia Sunkiss. Very pretty, I really like it. I just finished filming that video a little while ago and I mentioned in that video that I would try and get these planted up in this weekend's vlog. And then I realized that, well, I'm going to have to do that right now. A little bit later in the day, the sun's off of the majority of the garden. But um, tomorrow's the 4th. We're going to have family here, and there's going to be food all over the place. And can't, I don't just want to leave plants just sitting on the table. So I figured, since I said I was going to do it, I'd bring y'all along. It's not going to be anything all that crazy. Look at these root balls are pretty tiny. Not like it's going to be all that challenging to get those plants. In fact, I'm going to use the auger. don't need to dig holes for those tiny little plants over there. So I think what I should do is plan ahead head before picking up the camera. Pick out the spots for those heliconias. That's what I should have said. That would have been more professional. So over there's the Tropic, which is one that will get fairly large. Heliconia terms, not huge, but for my garden terms, pretty big. By the end of the growing season, I would imagine probably three and a half to five feet, somewhere in there. And then the uh, Adrian, which is a smaller one, should stay under two and a half feet. And that should be the same thing for the Petra. That's a dwarf one as well. Oh, that was so nice of you. Thank you, Toby. Sopping wet, all the space to walk around. You decided to rub right against my legs. Appreciate it. Where's your collar? Why are you, why are you naked? I'm gonna assume Turbo has something to do with that. And then the flamingos are just rhizomes. Just me plopping those wherever I think that they would fit. I'm just wondering if maybe I got ahead of myself when I ordered those. It was just, I got excited. I was feeling myself. That happens sometimes. I'm trying to be good this year about not getting things if I don't know exactly what I want to do with them. But the heliconias, I had an idea. I just forgot what it was. That's all. This area, not going to work. So everything over here is getting pretty big, too big for more heliconias to be in here. That's for sure, because the ginger is going to keep coming out. That's going to shade anything that would get planted in there. And then the, well, this is probably about maxed out height-wise, this Machetto's hibiscus. Are you ever going to bloom? All the others are blooming. Would you please get it together? Okay, I see one that might be open tomorrow. That would be nice. There'll be people here for you to have a nice flower to show off. Taking up all that dang space. Nice to have something to show for it. This area I want to get to work on in this week's video. Hopefully I don't forget, because I'm going to be taking a couple days off from filming between this and whatever happens after today. I had thought a heliconia clump would look really nice right here where all those bikini teenies are. I can pull those up, no problem. There are more than enough of them. I kind of like them right there though. Maybe right here, right here, where this smaller mass of them is with the bamboo in the background and the darker foliage of the this guy, the banana canna back there. Could work. Tropic is going over here in this corner that just looks terrible. It's not focusing, but I don't I don't care because it looks terrible. Whatever. And I wanted a heliconia in between the oleander and the bananas, but I don't know if that's a smart idea because the bananas are gonna keep growing and the grass is moving and filling in that area. So the Adrian is the only one which is a much smaller one, has a very interesting flower on it. That's the one that I'm not positive where I'd like to put that one. I'm gonna get these other two planted, see how they look. I'm not entirely sure what I mean by see how they look. This is gonna look like this. Not a lot to it. Not like I'm putting great big glorious plants in the ground, right? I'll be back. I need a moment. My brain needs a moment. Hey Tobes, you showed up for the tripod? I pulled the tripod, he came over and he's like, let me stand under the camera. You want some camera time? That's always good, Toby. People really like you, Toby. Yes, they do. It's cause you're so cute. Yes, you are. You're so cute, Toby. My hand wasn't on the button. He's fine. Don't worry. Thinking I will probably edit out the part of the video that comes out tomorrow or a few days ago for y'all where I said, oh, just watch the Saturday video. I'll get these planted in that video. It's because it seems so anticlimactic. Those plants, they're great. I'm happy with them. They seem to be nice and established plants, but I don't want people to be like, oh, I have to wait to watch it and see that. There's not going to be that much to see. I don't even need the auger. That pulled up a hole that that plant's going to drop into just fine on its own. Also, all that stuff I said before about which ones I was going to put where, disregard all that. I changed my mind completely. Here we go. Get a nice look at that root ball. Need to make sure that y'all can actually see it, though. Nice established roots on there. I also need to remember to use this as B-roll for the 
other video because I imagine people might want to see what's going on inside the soil. So there it is. Nice and firm. Not the biggest, most established plant, but I would say definitely better than just a rhizome. Oh, yay, fun, done. See what I'm it's not, not like some drastic change in the garden from dropping just one of those in the ground. So when I said just a moment ago about disregard what I said about what's going where, that's because I decided to put the Tropic here. The Tropic is one that's going to have a yellowy orange flower on it. Much larger banana-like leaves and just an overall larger plant compared to the other two that I got. I want that right here because I think that that will contrast nicely with the bananas that are in the back there. And I like the sun exposure for this one. With the Tropic, I don't usually get blooms out of that one unless it gets a really decent amount of light. Like the kind of light where it's okay, the plant's happy, but also on the verge of frying. Talked about that in the Heliconia video, mostly uh, that's related largely just to uh, a shorter growing season that I have up here if I were further south. That definitely wouldn't be the case and wouldn't be how you'd probably want to grow that one. But for me, it's the way it's got to go. So the Tropic going in there. Also, I feel like those other ones are small enough that they would probably get lost in all this. Those bikini teenies are going to keep growing. It's only July 3rd and the sun impatients are already, these things are just, they're freaking huge as it is. They're just going to keep getting bigger. I don't want to put something back there. It's going to get hidden. You won't really be able to see it. And hopefully those sable miners right here, the dwarf, Sable palms, those will hopefully put out lots of new growth and that could block a smaller plant. It just seemed like the smarter way to do it. Okay, and now for the Petra. I can think of a lot of reasons not to plant this one right here. One, drip tubing all over the place that I have to get untangled, so it's just not for a glamorous shot. It's not the most ideal spot to plant something. When I'm gonna be showing it to y'all, oh, there's a snail in here. I'm gonna get a shot of those roots. You can see part of that rhizome growth there. There's more growth coming out right there. Nice and full. Good looking plant. Look at that. Like to see that. This is going to take off a lot faster than that tropic will. Heliconias have always done well for me when I planted them over here on this slope, but it's also right next to the black eyed Susan. I know I'm going to be pulling Susan off of this thing constantly. I can be able to keep her little tendrils off of that heliconia. So I know I'll be getting annoyed with myself at some point for having put that there. But when it gets bigger and starts to flower, I won't be mad about it. And the Adrian. I know, I said that I wanted these for the landscaping, but I was looking over here at this container, this Robolini pot. I just kept thinking to myself, I would really, really like to have a Heliconia growing in this container. And that's how I arrived here. Decided to go ahead and go with it. Nice looking plant on this one too. You see a side shoot coming off of that rhizome. Right there, another one coming from down below. Lots of roots. This isn't vastly different from planting them up as just rhizomes. Probably saving a month of time, something like that. Maybe two months, just depends on where you live in your temperature. So that looks nice. Not that when you're looking up there, you can really tell what's going on down there, but when it fills in, it's gonna look beautiful. All right, and now for the sassies. These I would almost like to start off in a container, maybe just one of them in a container, other one plop into the ground somewhere. I don't really anticipate these doing much of anything this year. They'll grow, but getting them to flower, I don't know, probably won't be until mid-September. So I shouldn't say anything, but by the time they are ready to flower, the sun will have shifted back here quite a bit and it's going to be more difficult to make sure they're getting enough light in order to flower. So I have to keep that in mind. Here's the predicament. Also, I hope you all don't mind that I bring you along for the thinking process sometimes and not just the boom, here's what I'm doing and here's lots of information about the plants. Sometimes I think it's interesting to hear the thought process, even though it can be scattered amongst the ADD fog. Maybe you can get something from it. With the sassies, I also need to be more specific with what I'm talking about. Everything I planted with the exception of the tropic or citricorm type heliconia, the tropic is a blend. Citricorm are the parrot's beak type. They tend to be much more prolific and abundant and have a shorter growth phase with the foliage before you get them to produce inflorescence. So there is a slight bit of overthought going into a lot of this. I'm basing some of what I'm doing just off of experience with knowing which ones I've had more success with in the ground versus in a container. These right here, the sassies, these are the ones that have a little bit of pink on their inflorescence, really pretty heliconia. I think I mentioned I did in the video prior to this one when I got these that I hadn't grown them in a while because the last few times I had grown them, the flowers were washed out and just not impressive. But I think that they, that, that vendor may have been sending me one that, that's called strawberries and cream, which is 
one of my least favorite of the Sideroquorum type Heliconias. It has a little bit of pink in it, but it's overall just a washed out looking inflorescence. I have faith in Ye Brahms to have sent the right ones. I haven't even seen the strawberries and cream one on their site before. Or maybe I have, I don't know, that's not the point. But I know that the Sassies, from my experience, do really well in the ground. They'll usually flower at a smaller size when I have them in the ground, which you wouldn't always think would be the case. Sometimes with heliconias, oftentimes with heliconias, they'll start to produce once the roots fill up the container and those rhizomes are bumped against the edge of the pot and they go, oh, hey, we're established. Let's put up flowers. The thing is, the spot where I wanted to put these isn't going to be ready for a while and I need to plant these now. It's here, over here, this whole area getting revamped and redone in a few weeks. I'm still waiting for things to cut because I have to move all this drip. Like I have to reroute all my plumbing to a different area before I can redo this garden bed in all the garden stuff down there. That is really where I wanted to put these. I'll put them in a pot for now, but that feels like a step. Maybe I can just be really careful when I'm re... <laughs> I could just edit everything I just did out, but I feel like it's a nice preview to some projects that are coming up in a few weeks. So oh, pardon the fireworks. I don't know, it's like illegal here. I don't know why it's happening. I know why it's the fourth. That's why it's happening. It's the third, tomorrow's the fourth, that is. I did get the Borneo Giants planted up here on the hill, which I don't, wasn't planning on showing because I don't want to show the back of my neighbor's house or feel like I'm standing in their yard. But here, I think I can tuck the camera in right here. See the Borneos up there? Beautiful, alocasias. Safe to prune out. I think that the sassies might look good in front of those. Uh, side note, this hydrangea smells freaking phenomenal. The wow time was in a plant hall not too long ago pink flowers and lots and lots of scent. It, you know, there's not much to see anyways. It's just a green stick, but now there's a green stick in front of both of these alocasias that will hopefully have flowers on them in a couple months and that'll look nice. Oh, you being so good. He knows it's time to do swims. You wanna do some laps? Do some laps, Turbo? I think that location should work out well because there's drip and sprinklers run right to them. I did really want them over there in that corner, but oh well. When it's time and I have that corner done and ready to be planted up. I'm sure that I'll have other heliconias I could divide up and throw over there. We have a couple extra of the Chaconianas. Since I ordered from Nature's Hill, there are a few extras of those that I can divide up. They're not really extras, but I can make it happen. Heliconias are planted up. I am going to get some flowers in these windmill palms in the morning and get those moved off to my front porch. Okay, we'll pick that up in the morning or in a couple days. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know what's happening anymore. Okay, all right. It's the next day. Got some things done. It's probably too loud. I'll turn that off. I think I'd said that it'd be a couple days between the first start of the video and now. Just finished editing Wednesday's video and uh, was getting ready to clean the table off some more. I got a little bit done. And then I and then I was looking over here and I was just like, this is, it's gonna bug me. I don't want these out here anymore. The windmill palms, they go on the front porch and I need to plant them up. I just hadn't done it yet because I usually do it in a video and I hadn't had a chance to get the camera out and do all that fun stuff, and bring everybody along. So we're gonna start showing up in less than an hour, but that's, it's okay, I already have a lot of the food prepped. So really need to get those underplanted, get them to the front porch, off the patio, and then pick up the table, which looks a lot worse than it actually is. My swim stuff, I have a little tote that that all can go inside of. I have a tablecloth I could put on here. It's not very patriotic, so that's not, I need to stay on task here. Okay, windmill palm planters. Uh, both of these windmill palms, uh, they, <laughs> they both ended up with crown rot which has never been an issue. Actually, every single windmill palm that I have got crown rot last winter, and it's been years since that's been a thing. I did really push their limits, but not that much. I think what made the big difference was the garage, the grow space being so much warmer than it ever has been before, that when I brought these inside for like, I don't know, the week or two, that it was so cold that they had to be inside. I'm like two or three weeks during the winter time that that was just too much of a transition from uh, being like in the 20s, 30s, and 40s outside to just 78 to 84 in the gross space. In years past, before I had the big heater, the side of the garage where the garage doors is where I would keep these plants and it was much more cool over there, like probably in the 50s. There was a huge temperature difference between being a few feet out from the garage door and being closer over to that pond, like 20 degree difference. Things were very drafty. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that anymore, but I'm going to have to come up with 
something in the future for these windmill pumps because that's not going to work. I don't have to deal with crown rot every single year on them. But that, I can't leave it at that. They're recovering, they're fine. This one actually, okay, maybe isn't fine. This one's fine. That one, I don't know. I'm gonna keep treating it and just see what happens. It should be okay. Usually the windmill pumps push out of it. Uh, you can see here, not the most ideal time to be planting these up. Middle of the day, but it's all right. Gonna get the plants in there, give them heavy water. Gotta move to the front porch where they will have some more shade. I'm just tossing some impatience in these, and I think I have some caladium bulbs. Let me see. Yep, I do. One pack left of these caladium bulbs I've had sitting over here in the very cool shade on the side of the yard. I need to get those potted up. Anyways, he's been so good leaving that ball alone. What's the, did the drip not? <sighs> the sun's strong enough that the drip just doesn't always cut it. Oh, gonna have to do some hand watering as well. And that's all right, that's easy enough to do. You know what else I think would, do well in these because the front porch is just morning sun tripod behave yourself i also i'm on the other side of the patio just walked away from the camera mid filming smooch begonias see I'm, they don't look great here's the thing haven't grown them before and there were claims that they could take a lot of sun i'm gonna go ahead and say nah been getting not quite full sun morning sun and then afternoon shade and this is that's what they look like the front porch where these are going to go that is a much more shaded area and I think that they will do much better over in that spot. I'm going to move some of these impatience around. Should not even be messing with these when they're this thirsty, but eh, time crunch and breaking some rules. They're impatient as long as you don't squish the roots up, they'll be okay. These are the drip lines that I keep run in there. there. Might only be one issue with this and that is that I'm not certain I'll be able to get this dug out quite enough for this root mass. I'm gonna try. I don't know, I'm gonna be surprised. That's a, yeah, that's a tight fit. Nope, that's not going to fit. Wow, two planters in a row. I decided I didn't want to break the roots up on plants to make them fit. A foot planter in, what was that, Wednesday's video? Yeah, it probably would have looked nice to have some trailers or something in there, but I don't want to tear the roots up on those petunias when they were already looking so sad. So, never mind all of that, I'm just gonna get these moved to the front porch and get to cleaning off the table. I really, I didn't even need to pick up the camera for any of this. It's a goal for the week to get these underplanted, but just be doing on the front porch, that's all. <laughs> hey, that looks much better. I didn't really do it before and after, but you saw what it looked like a moment ago. So just try to remember, this had a lot of stuff on it. Now, to clear it off, get the tablecloth on here. Sorry about skipping through the windmill palm thing. We'll get back to it. It is a priority of mine. I'd like to get those planted up and looking better. The more I looked at them, I just wasn't liking the idea of being around inside of those roots and messing with things. Hey, you all saw how thirsty those impatience were. I really just needed to get those moved into the shade and get them watered. <laughs> yeah, I, I told y'all, I said, it's not very patriotic. It does have red, white, and blue in it though. I already prepared all of the snacks in multiple bowls so they could go on the Lazy Susan, the spinny part in the middle and people could spin the food around. That's not gonna work with a tablecloth on here though. I didn't think that through all the way, did I? It turns out I don't care. Everything's fine. This is good how it is. I'll just set out lots of little bowls and people can put their stuff on plates and bowls and bring it out here. And I can just spread the dip into multiple containers. I should try and find a Lazy Susan that goes around an umbrella pole so that when the tablecloth is on here, there's still a spinny to use for Yes, so everyone can use the, it's just so nifty. This table, I don't know how well it shows on camera. It is huge. It's six inch, six inches, six feet across. Not really set up for being able to reach around and grab things. So I have the spinny in the middle is ideal. None of that matters. I mean, I do, I want the tablecloth though. If that table's gonna get dirty. This thing's not fun to clean food off of. Okay, I didn't even need to pick up the camera today as it turns out, but I'm glad I did. Got to, <laughs> people like cleaning. It's satisfying, right? To get to see things cleaned up. I'm gonna get some fresh towels, lights and all that stuff. Family's gonna be here and I'll probably pick up tomorrow. If you were wondering, these are little fans that you turn on, keeps the flies off your food. That was a fun day. Did y'all have a good fourth? Long day, very long day. If you didn't get the impression from how the video started, just chaos, but good times all around. It's great hanging out with family and getting to just catch up and relax for a day. It was nice. Once I was done with all the chaos that was getting this table cleared off and things put away. Well, I haven't put the fans away yet and there's still a drink sitting out here. These are supposed to collapse back down. I just got these. I haven't 
tried to collapse them back down, but I feel like they're not, I don't think that's going to collapse back down. I think that that's stuck like this. But if you were wondering, if you didn't know what those are, they're just these little fans. They're very gentle. They don't hurt anything. You can reach right through them. You put around your food when you have it outside. Keeps the bugs off the food. They actually work really, really well. One of the issues I've always had with keeping the food out here and having this nice little turntable right here for having dips and whatever drinks and things on not drinks we're not passing drinks around all that often from a lazy season you know what i mean is that the flies they show up like there aren't many flies out here but since there's food flies show up and gnats and stuff like that if it's not a very breezy day and these things you just turn them on you can reach right through them to get to the chips or whatever it worked really really well and the batteries lasted all day i turned those on at like 12:45 in the afternoon and they went until like, I think 11, 12 at night and turn off. They still have some juice in them, but I thought that you could collapse them back down. That's one of the reasons that I ordered these. There are tons of different versions of these online, but that's not, just doesn't seem to want to go back down. There aren't any tabs or anything that you push. It just, I guess it's stuck like that. Might, I'm gonna set y'all down for a second and just this cardboard as a tripod for a moment. Cause maybe if you just like pinch, then they'll collapse back down. Nope. No, I think, I feel like it's going to break. You can also hang them. There's a thing here. I don't really know why you would hang them. They don't put out a breeze or anything of the sort, but if you wanted to, that's an option. Because they came all collapsed down. You pull them up and each one of these little sections snaps into place. You would think that you'd be, maybe if I slam it on the ground. Nope, that didn't do anything. Does the, does it still work? I didn't break it, did I? No, okay, so they're sturdy enough to punch onto the concrete a few times. That's good to know. Okay, back to work. I figured since I planted up the foot planter in the last video that maybe I should do the boots that go on my front porch. And since the windmill palms are on the front porch now, I have another planter out there. The problem is I think that maybe the theme of this video is me starting projects that I'm, I can't really pull off or finish. Also been separating colloidium bulbs in here to put into the windmill palm planters. That's not, it has nothing to do with the boots. These are generally a pain to plant up. I was thinking, oh, I could put the top hat begonias in this, but I don't, nah. The way that root ball is going to fit in here with the way that this pinches in. It would have been nice if these had been designed to be larger and then not have that indentation on the inside or not such a drastic indentation because with it shaped like this, you end up being drawn towards wanting to put a plant here and a plant there. And then it looks kind of weird when it's planted up. It looks better when there's one solid mass of something or some things coming out of the top. Doesn't matter. I think what I would like to do with this is to just throw some Semper Vivum in the top and I don't, I don't have any. Don't you think that some hens and chicks coming out of the boots on top, I think that'd be freaking adorable and low maintenance. That's the other thing. I keep this in a spot where I don't run drip to it and I don't want something else I need to water, especially on my front porch, because I'd never go on my front porch except for to like let someone into the home or to grab a package, but it's not like a place I hang out, you know? So disregard all of that since I don't have, oh wait, hold on. I need to say hold on when you're not actually here with me. Semper Vivum, oh, I do. It's just one, it's not gonna be enough to fill up the top of the pot. And I had something else that I wanted to do with this, but that would, work. Isn't this cute? It's the sugar and spice trio from the Chicks and Charm. Get a nice variety of color and textures by having the combination here. The thing is though, I had wanted to put these in one of my seashell planters. In the little one right here. I thought that would be, yeah, that's cute. That's where it's got to go. I could try and do things like a normal person, I suppose, and just throw a couple of Semper Vivum cuttings in the top of this and be patient, wait for it to fill it out, but I don't want to do that. Lame, no fun. Up a nursery next week and add the Semper Vivums to my list and grab a couple more to toss into the top of that container. Let's go on the front porch. I would like for it to be more of an instant gratification. Looks nice right away sort of thing. Look at who's blooming this morning too. Not that it's that big of a deal. It's just a hibiscus. You know, they bloom nonstop, but it's putting on quite the show. Five buds on there. A couple weeks ago, this thing had eight open at one time. Well, it was either this one or the other one. I remember one of them did and it was glorious. That was a sight to see. Need to get in here and prune this out. But the heat has rolled in. The Ipomias have started to do that thing that they do that makes me very much dislike them where they start to just grow inside the plants. Become a tangled up mess. I'm just ripping that out. It's vigorous. It's not going to miss it. Way as, <laughs> way as well. May as well move on to doing something that I can actually 
work on what was that tripod just randomly gave up on life there for no reason i had that tightened down pretty well so these are all caladium bulbs you tell from some of the leaves that are starting to open on them every year sam's club at least for the last like five or six years in the late winter early spring sometime in there they sell big bags of bulbs caladiums gladiolas Sometimes peonies, dahlias, cannas, elephant ears. I know some of those things are tubers and rhizomes, but you get the point. For a really good price. And uh, I usually buy a few of them every single year. And I, this is the last bag that I had forgotten about. It fell behind the chase lounges down on the other side of the patio. And I noticed it last week. And so I stuck them into a spot where the sprinkler would hit them just in case there was some life left in the bag. And it turns out there is. There's quite a bit of life left inside that bag, but they have turned into a tangled up mess. So I have these just slightly moistened. They're not sopping wet. Some of them are starting to dry out. I'm going to go through here and just get these separated out. There's going to be some dead stuff, probably some slime. If anything looks too gross and nasty, then I won't use it. For the most part, these are normally pretty sturdy. Yeah, that's still plenty firm. There's no squish on that at all. I don't know what's going on here. It's just a teeny tiny itty bitty little one. And if they're like actually clumped together, like that one right there, I'm just gonna leave it. It's not like it's in a tangled up mess or anything. All the growths are going in the right direction. So why mess with it, right? If this has things going in the wrong directions, could end up meaning that there will be caladiums in there that just rot and die and I don't want rotting and dying going on with any of these. I don't fully know, how do I, where do I start with this one? I guess just pull whatever's the most loose and see what needs to be untangled. So this was another reason that potting up the windmill palms got delayed. I wanted to use these, I'm pretty sure I had mentioned that. But when I opened the bag, I was like, you know what? There's a lot of slime in here. So I took them out of the bag, gave them a light rinse to help get some of the gunk off of them, some of the sliminess off of them. And then I just placed them into a very large nursery container that didn't have anything in it, just mostly to keep the dogs out of it. And set that in a spot where there would be some good airflow around them and they would have a chance to dry out some. For the most part they have, there's not much slime left in there. These were very, very slimy, understandably, since they had been stuck in the dark underneath those chase lounges for such a long time. So far, though, these are all looking pretty good. I don't think there are any duds. I think caladiums are such sturdy, forgiving plants. But usually when you have things that have corms and bulbs, rhizomes, tubers, whatever type, it's mostly about size. When they're small, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. Oh, and there's a worm in there, too. Good. The worms are good, just a little wiggler worm. Oh, look at how tiny that one is. I wanted to say going to be adorable, but really it's just at risk of being lost. Make sure that stays on the other side so I don't misplace it. So something I just noticed, there's another worm. When I was looking at the worms, <laughs> yeah, um, just sounded weird looking up, just hanging out looking at worms. There are also a good amount of springtails in here as well. And spiders, lots of little tiny. Everybody else's yard's just overrun with spiderlings this year like it's practically raining them out of the trees i don't know where they're coming from it's been that way for the last month and a half there's something to think about whenever people are telling me how relaxing and tranquil my yard is, it is but it also rains spiders out here doesn't matter that's all good things things that are good for pest control and everything but the springtails the whole point there is that they're probably the reason that there's not a lot of rot in here they've been eaten up the majority of any mold and fungus and nastiness that had potentially been growing in here. I actually think these all look pretty good. I didn't count them. I don't really want to. Do I need to? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Yeah, maybe three dozen, something like that. More than enough for those two windmill palm planters. I do not see myself putting 18 of these in each one of those containers. I could maybe do, I don't know, four, maybe six. That could be fine, but 18? Uh, go finish planting up those windmill palm planters, be able to use up whatever caladiums I want to use up, and then we're going to go around the garden and get these plopped into the ground. Hi, hello, next clip. Welcome to my front porch. That's probably going to keep happening. That's my security system letting me know that I'm on my front porch. It's the new idea here is to just have impatience in the front and then the caladiums in the back. I might have to scoot some things around. I also have a couple left that I can stuff into 
here. I should probably grab from the other six pack though. One, two, three. They look great, don't they? I'm gonna make sure that I have the colors blended up in both of these. I already have these kind of light pink peachy ones, whatever, whatever this. Whatever that is, those are in both of them, but I have these kind of a purple color. I don't know. I'm never the person to talk to about shades of colors. Sometimes people ask me if something's more of a red or a pink. I'm like, this is, dude, no. Whatever the case, need to be able to <laughs> mix it up. I also needed to leave some space here in the front for an alyssum. I have a couple of alyssum left that I haven't planted yet. Where are they? That need to be planted, right? I mean, look, it's so sad. So really everything I just planted, I need to scoot back. I wanted to repot this palm tree this spring because, well, it could use some fresh soil, but since it's doing this whole entire recovering from crown rot thing, I'm apprehensive to do that. The soil that's in here is just way too light and fluffy. I could definitely get this into a blend that's more rich. I can even tell that from digging into the hole here. I can see, you all probably can't see, I and mean, bring it over here, but I can dig down pretty far between the wall well, of the palm tree and the side of the pot, which I really shouldn't be able to do considering how long these have been potted up. The root balls on these palm trees should have filled these out completely within a year, let alone, what has it been? Like two or three years at this point. I know this doesn't look great. I hadn't intended on these being gorgeous, majestic planters, just wanted to get the annuals popped into them. And this time of year with the warmth and the drip system, these will be, they'll be looking fantastic in a matter of weeks. They just need some TLC, really just consistent watering, which they'll get from the drip system. I bet I can get six of those caladiums in there. I know I said four to six. I might even be able to get eight in here. Yep. That'll do. Look at you beautiful. Yay, summer planters, right? Gorgeous. I don't have that much left to plant as far as annuals are concerned. There's just a few things left on that table on my potting bench in the backyard. I'm trying to get through all that. I would like to get through the majority of it by the time this video's out. It might be the focus of the rest of the video. Actually, it's just oh, that beeping is really getting annoying. I don't think I have any of these purpley, darker purple ones in here in this pot. I'm going to try and get a couple of these down in here. This one does have better roots than the other one does. Don't really know why. And that's the other thing. These have sunk down into the containers. So having a trailer in them, <laughs> so having a trailer in them isn't that easy to pull off to begin with. Like, okay, I'm going to stick an alyssum right here. I don't really see that going all that well. Gonna give it a shot. Have to scoot some of these over to make room. Yeah, this soil is like actually too loose. There's nothing to it. I'm definitely going to need to come back here and top dress both of these containers with something more rich. That will be better than nothing. I prefer to repot them, but I don't want to mess with that one that has the crown rod on it. I think that would just, you know, probably destroy the plant. Got some soil, drop caladiums in. The caladiums, so freaking easy to plant. They don't need to be very deep. Don't have to wonder what direction to plant them since you know, they're already growing, right? Oh, this pop right into place. I'm gonna, I know it doesn't look like they're very, very deep. Well, it's cause they're not. I'm gonna come out here with a bucket of a more fresh and rich soil to drop up here. Not too much, don't want it to be too high. Actually should probably come through here and even de-husk the bottom of this palm tree if I'm going to do that. I think it's too loose off there so it doesn't work too much moisture against the trunk. Otherwise, that's done. Wow. Beautiful before and after, right? No, I know. Not so much. But again, give it a few weeks. Everything will fill out and it'll look great. And hey, since we're out here, here are those tropical, flam what were the names of these? Solarscape Flamingo Landscape Roses. Showed them off in a haul. I don't know how long ago. Maybe it was a month or so ago. This is what I did with them. Up front here, plants around some Taylor Junipers. They're getting fairly vigorous. Just kind of sat still for a while, but over the last like week or so, since we finally have had some rain, like a lot of rain, they've responded very well to that. There's a sprinkler system throughout this whole entire area, but it's just not the same. Amazing what a difference rain makes. Okay, that was fun. I'll get back to the backyard and get some more work done with some annuals. I went over to my potting bench and I gathered every single last annual that's left to be planted. So here it is. It's just Talk about a beautiful sight, right? Uh, well, here's how it goes, just for anyone who's new here or anybody who has forgotten. I generally have to buy the majority of my annuals in the springtime, in like I don't know, April and 
May. Once you get into around mid-June, the stores don't have much of anything, at least not much that I'm usually interested in. So you have to nab them up, grab them while you can. So I generally buy a couple extra of each one or just make sure to grab some that I'm like, eh, I might want that later in the year, but I don't really know what I'm going to do with it, which is why I have some of these Royal Velvet Super Tunias here. Otherwise, these are all plants that you've probably seen in the videos before. These are just what's left of the ones that I bought. That's also while these are looking pretty shabby, right? These aren't meant to be left in their nursery containers for two months. It's not, not generally the best look. I always have one of these videos every single summer and I will typically take them all and put them into one container and call it a garbage planter because that's what it ends up looking like. I don't really have a spot where I would want to put a garbage planter this year. So I figure I'm just gonna go through and plop these into random places that could use some more color. The Super Tunia Royal Velvets, I I don't want to do this, but I do want to do this. I still have my spring hanging basket. Let's go have a look at it. A basket that I don't normally expect to have around for very long because it's just full of plants for cool weather. But the alyssum, okay, it's not looking great, but considering the heat that we've had and that I basically stopped watering it because I figured I was going to get rid of it, I think it's looking pretty good. And the dianthus that's supposed to rebloom all summer, it's regrowing, has been reblooming. I didn't deadhead it either. To be fair, nothing said that I needed to, so why would I? I had some uh, rock cress in here. It was beautiful, very nice and purpley, but that's not a plant that's going to bloom during the summertime, especially not in the heat. So I could put the royal velvets in place of that rock cress, except that, wait, there's, I would need one too. I would need one more, but I could just say forget that and just put one on each side, even though it's not really how it's laid out. I may do that anyways, and then put that dragon's wing begonia in the middle. This one, right here. The pink dragon wing begonia. I think that might look nice. You have a nice drapey, droopy. <laughs> not with my words today. It's going to have a good pendulous flowers that the hummingbirds, they don't really drink at them that much, at least not that I've ever noticed, but it attracts them over to the area. Plenty of other things for the hummingbirds to have a snack on while they're over there. Some height with some color over there that that might look nice. Yeah? No, oh, give it a try. All right. Okay. I took the basket down and I've again, se not second thoughts, just maybe more just something I think worth discussing. Dianthus is doing surprisingly well. And after the little bit of smack I was just talking, it has buds on every single one of these growths. So I don't think it would be a terrible thing to just go ahead and clean it up, cut the dead stuff off and maybe leave it alone and let it do its thing. See, there's a bud in there and there's, but the, pretty much every single one of these growths has a new bud on it. However, that is more than likely because I haven't been watering this very heavily in the dianthus. They're pretty good with drier conditions as long as it's not piping hot outside. These aren't sustainable conditions, however, for the lobularia that's in here. You can see this whole entire thing needs to be watered. They aren't bone dry, but they will be if this doesn't get a watering tonight. So I'm thinking maybe, uh, hmm, that's not going to work long term. Forget all that, but just have a nice look at what the dianthus is looking like. Has a nice spread on it. I'm not going to throw it away. I'll take it and throw it over on the hill garden somewhere. But as far as the rest of the stuff that's in here, I don't really see reason to keep it. It's way past its prime. I'd say, you know, you made the right decision when the container has most of its plants ripped out and you go, oh, that looks better. All right, so I have two options here. I have a lot of options. I can really do whatever I want to. There are all kinds of things I could do with this basket, but I was thinking I might pull one of the lobularia out, which is, taking a few steps backward. But by doing that, if I pull one of the lobularia, then it's not going to bother me that I only have two of these Royal Velvet Super Tunias. Otherwise it's going to be the two Super Tunias like that, or you know, like this, that might be a better representation. And then just a big old gap over here. So I only have the two of them. I'm not gonna go buy another one. Cause again, that's moving backwards. I want to get all of these annuals planted before I start going back to the stores and buying more annuals. Right, that's my whole motivation here is to get this taken care of so I can go get more plants to work on other projects with. If I were to pull one of these out and just have Alyssum, Alyssum, Petunia, Petunia, that would be okay. But then I have two more Alyssum that I need to plant up somewhere. There's another one in the box back there. So. And there's the other part where it's like, is it really gonna bother you? I don't think it'll actually bother me that much only having the two. Pet Who am I kidding? Of course, that's gonna drive me crazy. I'm not gonna do that. This slobule area. Pull that one out and it can go over here and hang out in the cardboard. 
plant that up somewhere else. Super tunia right there. Do another one over here. Oh, and the reason that I wanted to use the royal velvets in here is because they smell very nice. They have that classic petunia smell that you don't get with petunias anymore, really, unless you grow some of the older seed varieties. It's generally purple petunias is where you get most of the fragrance from, and they just smell... I was going to say fantastic. It's not really fantastic. It's a faint hint of nostalgia, I think, would be a better description of it. And that combined with the lobularia, which also has a great scent to it, that's something I want near my doorway. I also think that the purple and every... We'll talk about that later. And then do the dragon wing in the middle. You know, just having that one big plant in the middle, world of difference. This already looks so much better. Trust me, it does. I had toyed with the idea of maybe putting a heliconia in the middle of this container instead of a begonia, or doing both. I know both is too much, but I might do it anyways. Because here's the... Alright, my hands are full and I didn't reset the camera. Scoot this over. I have this one heliconia that's left that has this giant crack in the pot. That's how it was shipped to me. It would be so easy to come in here and just pull one of these chunks out and stick that in the middle. I think that would look really nice. I don't really see any reason why the Heliconia and the Begonia, why they can't hang out together. Yeah, it may end up looking sort of wild, but it would look neat having a Heliconia up in the sky. Oh, nobody's managed to give me a convincing reason as to why I shouldn't. That's not about this, whatever type of Heliconia this is. It was labeled as a Chaconiana. This one actually might be the others do not look like this one. Uh, it's possible when I had ordered these, they sent me multiple different types because these look nothing like the others. They do look like a Chaconiana. But my point is that these are flowering off of little like eight to one foot stalks, which is perfect for a hanging basket, right? Rhetorical question, the answer is of course, yes. Okay, that does, it throws the balance off completely. I don't care. I just want a Heliconia in this basket. I'm gonna get this backfilled and hung up and <laughs> have a look at it when it's over there looking a little bit better. Okay, <laughs> here it is. What do we think? Yeah, it's a mess. None of these are going to look beautiful when they get done. Everything's going to take time to fill out since I'm working with some sad plants here. <laughs> Very sad plants. I'm confident that come morning time, this lobularia is gonna look good as new. And in a couple weeks, the petunias will start to fill out and look pretty nice. And I think the Heliconia is the perfect size for this container. When I look at this head on and then imagine the purple <laughs> on each side and the lobularia not looking like garbage with the color and everything filled out in there, I really am going to like this. This is supposed to be a pink dragon wing begonia. It looks pretty red to me. That problem every year, every time I buy pink dragon wing begonias they end up being red. What's that about? That's gonna fill out, be nice and lush, and then have the Heliconia flowers out the top up there. The Heliconia is gonna spread throughout this entire thing and maybe take it over, but that's okay. I love heliconias. That's that's what they want to do. I'm fine with that. This looks nice. It'd look even better if I pulled this thing off. It's time for that to go. Oh, satisfying. The first few of these that I pull off every year after they've been delivered from being in storage all winter, things always look pretty crusty and scummy on the inside. But after this one, the rest of them should start to look good again. You want this? Here you go. You can have it. There you go. Good boy. Have fun. I had thought about doing the Super Tunia Persimmons up there in that basket, but just because the color is so great. That's these. I'll show you. Right here. Persimmon. Beautiful color, right? Gorgeous. I absolutely love this Super Tunia. But it's not the most vigorous of the Super Tunias. The Royals should be more vigorous. Usually I feel like I get more growth out of them than what I'm seeing out of that Persimmon so far. Again, the fragrance is nice. I wanted some more cool tones over here and uh, I thought that the uh, Persimmon just would blend in too much with these gingers when those are in flower and then I wouldn't have that nice fragrance from the purple petunias by the window. It's like to open those windows in the morning. It's nice having the scent in the house. And I think the purple will go nicely with the super, no, 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 sun patience. These magenta e sun patience. It's just a cooler tone. I think will balance out nicely, especially once there are flowers on that ginger, having orange flower spikes up there with the pink dragwing begonia, the orange from the uh, heliconia and the purples. Yeah, it's gonna look nice. Not very elaborate, but I'm fine with that. Hell of a lot cheaper than trying to pull off an elaborate hanging basket. Hanging baskets get expensive to put together. So I'm fine with just using my extra plants. What's left? Vista bubblegum, two persimmons, two alyssums, couple of vinca, impatience. I'm not concerned about those. And the rest of the caladium bulbs. There's still quite a bit left in here. If I talk as much through these as I have through everything else, this is gonna be a very long video. I think I need to change the tone here, don't I? 
this container, there's lots of room for activities in here. I have this impatient that it's, it's already supposed to be in there. I just, well, forgot about it. Forget about it, it's not the right term. Where are my clippers? Forgot, not forget. It's it had a drip on it, and so it's just, has been low maintenance and I was like, oh, I'll get to that later. This is one of the Tropical Rose Variegated Sun Impatience. One of my favorites. I pop one of these in this container every year. And the thing about them is they don't get all that much bigger than that one as it is. And I'd been waiting for some palm gain to come in the mail, which did, that came in, I think it was Monday or something. I don't know, I went through and I spread a bunch of it around into my various pot. I didn't want that in here before I put the palm gain in because I would just end up having to dig most of it out. The challenge though, every single year when I put one of these in here is digging out that root ball enough to actually make this giant hanging basket fit in here. I'm going to have to add more soil. That's okay, nothing wrong with that. I could, if I really wanted to, divide this up because there are four different plants in here but I just I don't, know, I don't see a reason to put the plant through that sort of a setback seems unnecessary especially this time of year there's no reason to stress it out anymore because it's July it's just going to be hot and the warmer it is outside the more I prefer to coddle the plant's roots such a contrast to the springtime where I will take a plant and just shred the roots on it well an annual not any plant but with annuals I'll pull and tear at those roots as long as things are nice and cool and make them fit and can make pretty much whatever you want to do work with most of them but not when it's hot outside it's more risky to do when it's hot outside so there's that that looks nice that looks beautiful and there's some room over here on the edge too I have this heliconia there from last video yeah it's from the last video this is an adrian like a good spot for some color put some super tunias there i think that would look nice these are the persimmons the ones that i talked about earlier there's a look at the tag that fun kind of corally color with a yellowy orange center on them. They don't get all that big. 12 to 24 inches is what it says, but I haven't seen them being all that vigorous. They flower profusely. They've had great flower power to them. Been excellent as far as flowering is concerned, but not a ton with size. There hasn't been a lot going on with them as far as their size is concerned though. I noticed as I was planting up that impatient that I didn't get a ton of palm gain down in there. That's just a slow release palm fertilizer if you were wondering. So despite having waited for it to come in the mail, I think I'm gonna have to order some more and get that worked in there. Also, I don't know if I need to add more soil because the stuff I displaced raised things up nice and high and this has a lot of fresh soil in the top of it. Really nice organically rich soil. So maybe I should just leave it. Probably shouldn't mess with it too much. Okay, and I have this red dragon wing begonia. I haven't potted that into this yet for a few different reasons. This entire area is having some big changes come its way, hopefully in the next month or two. I don't know, it's hard to say when. There's going to be a new, Turbo, would you come here? You, come here, come on baby, come here, good boy. Yeah, get out of the way. Having a new step put in here, something that's a little bit bigger, more grand and easier for the old dog to use to get in and out of the house. The top step on there is very narrow. Tucker didn't do great with it. Toby struggling with it. So putting in something bigger and maybe doing a rail, I was thinking something fun and nautical, like a couple of pilings with some really big jute rope, very tight and taut jute rope that would go from up there and down a couple of levels. That might look cool. Getting off track. Why well, I haven't planted up this area yet. I've been waiting to see what was going to go on with the plans for the steps. So I don't want to fill this up with containers and then have to move them, right? I already know what I want to do with these and that's succulents. Just need to go get the succulents. And the begonia that's there, I was thinking about putting another hook up there and hanging it because I think that that would look really cool. So I haven't planted it. That was the whole thing. I went off and started talking about the steps. Really, I could have just said, I'm thinking about hanging it up there. Let me know what you think about that. Now the plant would still probably be kind of stuck inside the foliage there. But you get the point. It's just something I have to think about. That's all. All right, and what's left? There are two vinca, which I also just remembered have to hold on to because those are going to be pot up with some coconut palms that I'm waiting to come in the mail. See, and that leaves caladiums, a super junior vista bubble gum, and two alyssum. Okay, sometimes I go and scout out an area to plant stuff in and see where I want to set the camera. And I made the mistake this time of taking the plants with me. So now every, I'm all done. I was just filling it. Once I started going, I couldn't stop. Y'all saw what I've been working with out here. It's just some sad looking old plants. We can come down here and have a look at what I did real quick. Alexander palm. It looks great, doesn't it? No, these things take some time. Oh, I forgot. I need to backfill this with soil. I'm not done yet. 
like my technique. It's a decent way to get the soil moved around evenly when you just do it right up from the top. Just don't let it sit in there for a long time. And nothing wrong with it. A big container, there's a lot of space for that soil to get moved around. So what's in here, I had initially planned on planting this container up with sun impatiens. And uh, I noticed when it was delivered that there were some regular impatiens in here and I didn't plant those. Just from seeds that made it their way into the container from all the ones that I had planted down further. The ones down there, right? See, right above the hose? Right there, all those. I assumed that those would die, right? Didn't think that those would end up surviving because of the amount of sun over here, but instead they've just grown and for the most part forest. Figured may as well put the rest of the impatience in here so that it's at least even and not just random chunks of impatience in here. I also have a ring of caladiums that are going from here all the way around the front. I did my best to arrange the ones that look like they were red-leafed caladiums towards this side where they'll be getting more sun. The darker the foliage on a caladium, usually the more sun they can take, the more light, the more you want to aim towards morning sun and afternoon shade. I did an alyssum, Super Junior Vista bubblegum, and an alyssum. And tons and tons and tons of caladiums. Again, not like a beautiful display to show off, but just need to give it time eventually these will come over the front and hide this part of the pot. That's what I want. I have a heliconia over here that's hiding. Oh, did you think that was for you? Heliconia covering up the front of the container right there. Some other stuff over there. But these will help cover the pot from this angle. That's good. That's what I wanted. I actually had intended on putting some Vista Bolo gums in here anyways, and I just completely forgot about it. And I also really like the idea of having impatience and caladiums in this container just because that makes things more cohesive to the rest of the yard over here where it's, you know, impatience and caladiums. And then again, more impatience and caladiums. Just makes sense to match it all together. I put a gate here because the dogs kept running through. That's why that's there. Doesn't look pretty, but it's gonna let the plants grow. <laughs> that's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be a lot of color under there and that's gonna match up both the impatience down on that end. And if I can get the dogs to stop running around in this spot right here, then I could have that row of impatience go all the way over to the Alexander palm, then it would look like they're sort of flowing from the Alexander palm and over, because I do still have a few impatients left. Not much though. I'm done with all the annuals now, except for those Vinca, but otherwise, all good, all done. Since we're down here, I want to take a moment to appreciate these hydrangea trees. Look at that. Isn't that just stunning? These look absolutely phenomenal this year. Yeah, that one's leaning. Despite that, absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful. They are huge. I think I came up with an idea to get this, sorry, Turbo keeps running underneath the tripod. I think I came up with an idea, that's what I was saying, to get this straightened out, and it would be to put a two by four on the outside of the pot, strap that around the edge of the pot, and then I can use a, you know, a ratchet strap to pull this into the two by four, so it would just be one two by four supporting this at a couple points so it's not too much pressure on the trunk. The thing is, it's not stuck like this. Once those flowers are off, when it defoliates for the fall, you can just pull it right back and it straightens itself back out. So it's not like this is a permanent structural issue. It just does this every year because so much of the growth is on this side from back in the day when I had these growing over here on each side of that staircase. I had to move them because there wasn't enough sun for them over there. Ironically, little did I know, in a couple years there'd be more than enough sun over there for them. It seems like no matter how much I prune it in the late winter, it still just all flushes out from that same direction. I would have thought it would even out. I've turned the pot and everything, and it's still just, that's what it wants to do. And I'm fine with it, because from every other angle, it looks great. From down here though, it does bug me. I think that would work, just a two by four, maybe paint it blue or green or something that kind of disappears into everything. Black would probably be the best color. And have a couple contact points on here and just pull, use a ratchet strap and pull that in. I think that'd probably work. What do you think? And then I wouldn't have stakes over the container. I've yet to find a stake that I can put into these pots that's strong enough to keep these looking nice. The stakes I've tried, it's just not enough. There's not enough of a support down below. It's not dense enough down below in the pot, whatever, I don't, whatever the case. I've used up to four stakes before and still it just goes whoop, leans right over. I think it'll be an easy fix grab a two by four and some straps. Which is also a great excuse to go to the hardware store. I mean, look at those from down here. Isn't that just stunning? Absolutely beautiful. I did not give these the heaviest prune this year. The paniculatas, it's suggested to cut them back by a third to two thirds in the late winter, like right when they start to push out their buds. I didn't do that much of a prune on it. 
mostly because I wanted them to fill out some more and I pruned them every single year. The trunks have thickened up nicely on them. One of the reasons they say to do that is well, to maintain shape, good root structure, but mostly so that you have more bloom points on the plant for more flowers because they bloom off of new wood. And I would say that there's more than enough going on in there as far as the flowers are concerned. I can't imagine there being any more than this. When this one on the left gets going, it's going to be a showstopper. I give that a few more days till those start to really open up. It's just going to be absolutely breathtaking, especially at night. And the lights come on at night and they reflect the colors from the pool and everything. Oh, it's going to look so good. That looks good there. I like this. I wasn't sure about this placement for a lot of reasons, but this is this is good. Look at all that. Nice tones. Those look good together. Summerific Candy Crush. Not a big fan of the machetto type hibiscus. I don't like the leaves on them. A lot of them tend to have a very pale, just dry look to them. And a not really, I don't know. I just, this leaf to me in my mind belongs on a tree or a vine. Get the point. I like a nice shiny, glossy green leaf. But this one, it's just the flowers on it are so beautiful. I don't even care. And they have a dark center. Which also, not my jam with the hibiscus. There's such an awesome shade of pink and they're so big. Really big, I can't quite reach it. Probably I would say a six to seven inch flower. It's a good size. Oh hey, this thing started growing. Do you remember when I planted up this area with the sun and patience? Apparently we're doing a little garden tour now. And I pulled up a bulb and I said, oh, this probably goes to that thing that I cannot for the life of me remember the name of that doesn't come up until July. That would be this thing. So I'm glad that I didn't destroy that even though I can't remember what it is. Looks like a little bulblet of some kind made its way down to the front there. If anybody has any idea what this aeroid is, let me know. You need to see the flower to get proper identification, and I missed it. I totally missed when it was flowering, because you know, it's tucked all the way back in there. I want to say it was labeled as a panella, but I can't find any panellas online that look anything like this. So it may have been some sort of soronatum, perhaps. I don't know. thought it was a type of voodoo lily, but the, the flower doesn't really give me Sorinatum vibes. Maybe it would have when it was open. I'm not sure. There's an example of the leaf size. Generally only has like one to three leaves on it. Doesn't grow for a lot of the year, so it's not like the most desirable plant to have out there. For being in zone six, you gotta admit, that is a very cool tropical looking leaf, and I would like to know what it is so that I could have more of them. I'm gonna keep an eye on that flower back there now that I know that it's there for a change. Most years I miss the flower altogether and see what I can do about getting some seeds from there. Might be able to start some more of whatever these are. I think I got this from, it was either Brian's Botanicals or Plant Delights Nursery. Anywhere from between 2008 to 2000 and I would say 16. I don't, it's, there's an eight year span. I don't even remember when I got the plant. No idea, I just, it's like a complete and total memory erase happened when it comes to this plant and it's driving me crazy. The leaf looks like a little vichii. Kind of. Close enough. It has the ripples on it. Okay, I had a good time. Feel great about getting things done, getting things planted, getting some color and just some spots. I forgot to mention that I did have one apprehension about putting these Supertunia persimmons over here. It's that this spot right here is smid shaded from the Robolini palm. Vista series petunia may be a better idea for a spot like that because they have so much vigor that if they're not getting full sun, they can still look pretty good. Supertunias in general can look pretty good when they're not getting a ton of sun. But the reason I went with the persimmon over there though wasn't just because of the color. I have this one planted over here that's not getting much sun and it's still flowering and looking pretty good. Also, Musa Florida has gone absolutely insane in this container. It's opened like two leaves in the last week. It might be an exaggeration, it might be a week and a half, but it's doing really well. I also didn't want to do a Supertunia Vista in this spot regardless because I they're just it's too much <laughs> they can be a lot and I want the space to stay more clean and manageable dirt gets piled up when the plants trail too much onto the ground and then the dogs track it in the house just to keep life easier I prefer something that's not going to grow all the way to the ground so the persimmon seemed like a good way to go tattoo apricots looking great apricot apricot I don't care how you say it what a difference rain makes not like I don't water my plants I spend a lot of time out here watering but just a few days of rain drastic transformation with a lot of these. Speaking of rain, I think we might get some more of it pretty soon. It's breezy. I heard some thunder off in the background. So I should probably wrap it up. Excuse the chaos. When I'm just trying to get things done, I tend to just get into hyperdrive. I'm just like, I want to get it done. So coordinating the talking and conversation isn't always my strong suit. I'll work on it. I apologize if it was driving anybody crazy. Forgot to mention that there is a Waikiki bulb in the front of this container too. The Alexander Palm container. So right 
kind of right in front of this trunk, there will be a Waikiki that comes up in there, and that's going to look nice. It's a color case. A color, I'll show you. I know, said I was going to go, but need to finish the thought, right? Waikiki. There's one. It's fairly immature leaf on there, but still an absolutely beautiful color case. Yeah. Okay, and that's going to do it. Yes, there are fake flowers out here. I was entertaining over the weekend, and sometimes I bring the fake flowers out just for a little extra decor without actually having to decorate. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing what, what happened. Something bite your bite? Everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Here's an example of what I was talking about with the coconut palms and the vinca. So I have two other coconut, well, I have one other coconut palm. The other one is taking an eternity to get here. I don't know why. The seller did that thing where they marked it as shipped about three weeks ago. And then FedEx was like, oh, it'll be delivered by the end of the week. And then the end of the week came and all the information changed around to just said, like marked as to being in pre-transit. So basically the seller just sent an invoice to FedEx, but haven't sent it. I don't know what's going on. We have three different types of coconut palms out here. We'll be talking about it. It'll be in the video, but I wanted all of them to have a little vinca in the front of the containers. Let me know if you can identify that aeroid over there. Throw out whatever thoughts you might have. Everything I can Google, maybe you'll be able to narrow it down. But yeah, that was definitely thunder. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.